Let us pray. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you and bless you for this hour of your word. The hour of receiving from you. The glorious hour. The hour of healing. The hour of deliverance. Almighty Savior, we pray. Send your word again. And then we shall be healed and delivered indeed in Jesus' name. Father, you said that this word of God, the Holy Scriptures in the Bible, is the word of life. That the words you spoke, they are spirit and they are living. Oh Lord, bring us alive by your word. And we shall be alive unto God once again in Jesus' name. Father, unto you be the praise. In Jesus' Most wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Reading from verse 37 to verse 39. And it reads, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were preached in their hearts, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call you hear what we just read and the title of our message today is Connected by the Holy Ghost. Connected by the Holy Ghost. As we have just read, the Peter spoke, Apostle Peter spoke to them on the Pentecost day when the Spirit came upon them. The apostles and the rest of them all were together were 120 of them in the upper room in Jerusalem. And so when the Spirit of God the Holy Ghost came upon them. They were connected to life, to God. And then the people who had them were uh, wondering, what shall we do? How can we gain entrance into this connection? And then Peter now told them that you are to repent and be baptized, every one of you. And then you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost is a gift, the gift of God. And that the way to receive the Holy Ghost is to repent. It to repent and turn to God. Because it's a gift given by God to connect us again to Him. Remember that Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. And through that sin, man was disconnected from life, from God. He became blind. He died. He was disconnected from the living. You know, God is living. That's why it's called the living God. And he alone has life. It is only God that has life. Immortality and life. This is the reason why Jesus says that except you eat his flesh, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Because there's no life anywhere else except in this Son of God, Jesus Christ. The scripture said so, that he alone has life and immortality. And so Adam was disconnected from Christ, was disconnected from life. He died to Christ. He didn't know Christ anymore. Like one switched off from lights. So we are looking at connected by the Holy Ghost. So to be connected to life again, to the truth of God again, has to be by the Holy Ghost. And so that's what Peter, Apostle Peter was telling them. 
that the only way to be connected is by the Holy Ghost. But how do you receive the Holy Ghost? Except you have repented first. You must have a change of heart, a change of mind, and then direct your mind towards God. Like the prodigal son said in his heart that I will return to my father's house. And there I will tell my father that I have wronged him, I have wronged heaven, wronged God, wronged done wickedly. I'm not good. And then he went on that note, on that mind, in that state of mind, then the father received him. That we, if we do so, if we will repent, if we will have a change of heart, we must confess that we are sinners. We have died unto God. We don't know whom God is. And then God will have mercy on us and then bring us to life by giving this gift. We are looking at connected by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. That is why I say in James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verse 17 of it. If you turn with me to the book of James chapter 1. Then we shall be reading verse 17 of it. Then we hear what the scripture says. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and come down from the father of lights light god is light you remember he says in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god in him was life then this life was the light of man so god is light the life of god shining out gives light gives light you can see say every good gift and every perfect gift so God gave us perfect gifts. Perfect gift. This perfect, perfect gift, Peter is telling them that it is the Holy Ghost. This perfect gift of God is called the Holy Ghost. Go with me to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Verse 7 of it. Psalm 19. Then we'll read verse Seven of it, and hear what it says. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Are you hearing? He said the law, the Holy Scriptures, is perfect, converting the soul. Convert. Changes a man, converting the soul. Then this scripture is the testimony of the Lord. He is sure, making wise the simple. This testimony is sure. That's why it says the Holy Scripture. It says, forever, O Lord, the Holy Scripture is settled in heaven. The Word of God is settled. It's unchangeable. He is the Lord and He changeth not. He cannot be changed. So he's perfect. That's what he's saying. That every good gift and every perfect gift is from God. He's telling us that every word of God, every word in the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, came by the inspiration of God. And all is good and perfect. You can see, it. this good and perfect gift, God gave to us. And it is this gift... Apostle Peter is calling the Holy Ghost. That God gave us this perfect gift as the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost. That is why he says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So this Son of God is not flesh and blood. Although he was made flesh, and was born in Bethlehem. Who was made flesh? The Word. Who was born in Bethlehem? The Word. The Holy Scriptures in the Bible. But God did not give him to us like that. No. He didn't give us the man Christ Jesus. Rather, he gave us Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. 
He gave us the word, that's what it means. He gave us this word in this Bible, by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Look at it. Just like we receive languages, we receive it by the Spirit. It needs to enter you, whether English language or French or German. If it's not inside you, you can speak it. So the spirit of that language has entered you. That's why you are speaking it fluently and you carry on speaking it all the rest of your life on earth. So he's saying to us now that this same word of God, this language of God, this holy scriptures is given to us by his spirit. For God is a spirit. And that this word of God is spirit. But is given by the Holy Ghost. That is, we need to receive the Spirit of the Word. And then how do we receive the Spirit of the Word? He said we have to repent first. We have to turn from the old man, the wicked man, the man of the flesh, to the man of the Spirit. Who is this man of the Spirit? The Lord from heaven. The Lord. This Word of God came from heaven. So this man of the spirit is called the man of the scriptures, the man of the word. He's a man, but he's not a natural man. He's a spiritual man. He's the Lord from heaven. We can only receive him when we deny ourselves, when we repent, when we change from the old man. That Mr. You, that I, which you know, which you were born with, or you were born into this world with, has to be rejected. And then you now, before you can receive this new man as a gift by the Holy Ghost, then only then can we be connected again to God. That's why he told Nicodemus, except the man be born again. Not the old man now, but this new man, this new man from heaven, is called the inner man, Jesus Christ. He says, except a man be born of this new man, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can never be connected to life. Who is this man? This holy Bible we carry. He is the spiritual man. He is the man of God. The one that came from God. Not from the dust of the ground. No. God formed Adam from the dust of the ground. But this one in the holy Bible came from God. Came from God. God spoke to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. When he finished speaking, every word he spoke, he wrote it on the stone tablet and gave it to Moses to give to the Israelites. That word he gave to Moses to give to the Israelites, he said he is Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God himself. And how do you receive him? He said when you repent, you turn to him. And Jesus says, if you continue in my word, if you keep listening to my word, you attend to my word so that the word of God will be speaking to you as he told Joshua, as men talk to men. So the word of God will be speaking to you. He said, if you continue that way, then you are my disciple indeed. You are now a disciple of this new man, the man of the scripture. Then this man of the scripture, because you have turned to him, he will not give you his spirit. His spirit, what spirit? The spirit of the Holy Bible. The spirit of the scripture will not enter you, so you will be talking the same way. You have his spirit in you. Then that is the born again. Born not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but born of God. Born by the word. Born by the word. There will be a new formation in you. That's why he said, my little children, in whom I travel in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. It is that formation is the gift of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Which it says in Colossians 1.27, that Christ in you is the hope of glory. That Holy Ghost in you is Christ. But given by the Spirit, given by the Holy Ghost. Turn with me to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. We are looking at connected by the Holy Ghost. John chapter 7. And hear what the, the Lord himself. The king of glory spoke when he came here on the earth and recorded for us in the holy scriptures that abide forever. John chapter 7, reading from verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. 
He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified or resurrected. He has not returned to the Spirit yet. You know, he came from the Word. He needs to return. He said, I came from the Father into the Word. Again, I leave the Word and I return to the Father. He returned to the Spirit is what it means, to where he was before. And then he says, then he will not pour out this gift of the Holy Ghost. He will not give this gift of Christ. He was speaking of the Spirit. That they that believe on him will receive. He wasn't talking of natural water. He was talking of spiritual water. Which is the Holy Ghost himself. The gift of God. That's why he say in Luke chapter 24. See what he told the disciples. In Luke chapter 24. He told the disciples this. After resurrection. Now he's in the spirit. He said this to them. In verse 49, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. This is what he was saying in John chapter 7. We just read. He said he sent the promise of the Father Upon them, God made a promise. He said that promise is going to send it. The promise was not the man Christ Jesus that came in the flesh to die. No, the promise is the word himself, the Holy Ghost, in the spirit. The spirit of Christ is the promise. The word was made flesh so that he would draw our mind to the word. He came preaching the word unto humanity so that we, he would establish our heart in the word. So that we'll put our faith in the Holy Scriptures and believe that this word of God, this word that God gave to the Israelites upon Mount Sinai is the Son of God himself. He is the very Christ. And now when he had done that, he returned to where he was before. Where? To the word. Now he says that he will send the promise of the Father. What promise? The promise of the Holy Ghost. Go with me to Acts chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. That is the promise of the Father, the Spirit Himself. That's whom God promised. Not the man Christ Jesus, but the Holy Ghost. Connected by the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1. Reading from verse 4 of it, it says, And being assembled together with them, that's with His disciples, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, as we just read in Luke. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He was speaking directly to them. That they have heard that the John spoke of the baptism, he baptized in water, but he spoke of the Holy Ghost baptism, and that John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. He said to his disciples in verse 7, and he said unto them, It is not for you, because they said in verse 6, let me read verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? In verse 7, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. That this thing you are looking for is in God. That thing you are looking for, that holiness. That righteousness, that is re that restoration you need. He said is in the Father, is in God, is in the Spirit, is in the Spirit. In verse eight, but you shall receive power 
after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. He said, for you to be a witness of me, you need the Holy Ghost. Why are people not able to live a Christian life effectively? Because they think they have it in themselves. No, the Christian life is in the Holy Ghost. That's why I say the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It's in righteousness, it's in peace, it's in joy. Where is all this? In the Holy Ghost. Where is the peace? In the Holy Ghost. Where is the righteousness? It's in the Holy Ghost. Where is the joy? In the Holy Ghost. He said you will receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Because there is one Spirit. All of the fruit is in Him. It's in the Spirit of God. It's in Christ is what He's saying to us. It's in the Word. This Holy Bible we carry. Everything is in God. He said you receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So for us to be connected to the things of God, we can only be connected by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Because all is in the Holy Ghost. All the Father has is now in the Holy Ghost. Look at it. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Hear what it says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 17 of it, hear what the infallible scripture says. Now the Lord is that spirit. Are you hearing? He said, Now the Lord Jesus is that Holy Ghost. Who is the Lord? The Word. Who was made flesh? The Word. Who is the Son of God? The Word. The Holy Scriptures in the Bible. He said now, the Holy Scriptures in the Bible is the Holy Ghost. It's not that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see, he said where the Spirit of the Lord is, where is the Spirit of the Lord come inside you, he was telling the disciples. Then you have liberty. You will be able to be witnesses in, unto me. You will have the witness inside you. You have the witness of God inside you. Because you don't know who God is. But when you receive the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Ghost, who knows what is in the mind of God, will not be witnessing me inside you. That is the Christ in you. He said, now the Lord, the Word of God, the Holy Scripture, is that Spirit Jesus was speaking of in John chapter 7. Where it says that they that come to drink of Him, he wants you to drink this water of life freely. He told the woman of Samaria, if you know who is speaking to you, you would have rather ask him to give you living water to drink. Yes, this word of God is living, living water. The scripture is living. That's what he said in Jeremiah 2 verse 13. He said he is the fountain of the living water. Who? The Lord. This word of God, every one of them is drinking it. Is drink indeed from Genesis to Revelation. He said, When you are drunk of the rivers of living water, then out of your belly will be flowing out the same. Just like you drank English language, you are flowing English language. He said, When you drink of Him, drink of who? Of the Holy Scripture, of the man of the Scripture, then the Scripture will be flowing from you, not letters, the spirits of the Scripture. Will be inside you. He says, The Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, then there is liberty to live the Christian life. In verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 3, we are reading. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. He said, This word of God. This Holy Scripture is the Holy Ghost Himself. That as you keep looking unto Him, as you look into the mirror of the, your own mirror, you look unto the Scripture, this perfect law of liberty, this glorious law of liberty, if you keep looking, He said the Spirit you are looking unto, the Word Himself, will change you. It will change you, make you holy, make you righteous. It will give you power to live a Christian life. He will give you power because the power is in him. He says, not for you to know the times or the season to be holy. 
He says it's in God, it's in this scripture, in this holy Bible. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. We are looking and connected by the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8. I hear what the eternal spirit says. As he told us that he that has ear, let him hear what the scripture is saying. Let him hear what the spirit says. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He says, if anyone does not have the spirit of these holy scriptures, he is not connected to God at all. Just like if any man don't have the spirit of English language inside him, he is not connected to English language. If any man is not having the spirit or the language of French inside him, he says he's not connected to French language. So the same way that if we don't have the spirit of this holy Bible, the spirit of this holy Bible, he said now this scripture, this holy Bible is the Lord, is that spirit. And where the spirit is, there is liberty. That if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be, the spirit of God, he dwells inside you. Where? In your heart, in your soul. In your mind by the Holy Ghost, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Because this is the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ Himself, the Word, is the righteous one. Do you know that He's the righteous one? Do you know that every word of God is righteous, is holy, is true? Every word in this Bible is holy. It says because he is the righteousness of God. God has given him to us to be our righteousness, our sanctification, our wisdom. Who? The scripture, the man of the scripture, Jesus Christ himself, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Are you hearing? He says he will give life to your mortal body. What does that mean? You will be alive unto God. You will be connected. If you have the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ inside you. He says only that person that is connected to God. He says, see, he means he will give life to you while you are on earth. You will be alive. That's what he was telling Martha. That he is the resurrection. He is the life. That if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead on the third day, the spirit of this scripture, the spirit of this holy Bible, is the same spirit that raised the man Christ Jesus from the dead. He said, if he dwells in you according to the program of God, he said, you'll be alive unto God. You are connected. You are connected. By what means? By the spirit, by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. He says, if you don't have his spirit, that man, that woman is disconnected. You see, that's why they asked Peter, what must we do to be connected? When they saw the spirit action on the Pentecost day in Jerusalem, they said, Peter, men are brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and turn to this man of the scripture, whom you rejected, whom you crucified. This stone, this word of God, this holy Bible, he said he is the stone the builders disallowed. They have rejected him. He said he is the same, he is the chief cornerstone. He is the same that is the stone. What the living stone that was flowing, was giving the water in the wilderness. He said, you as newborn babe, desire the sincere make of the word. Be connected to this stone. What stone to this Bible? Once you are connected to him, as you are connected and you continue with him, he says he will connect you by the Holy Ghost to the power of God, to the seat of God, to the life of God. Because the God, the life of God is in him. He said in him was life. In who? In the word of God. In the Holy Ghost. This power is in the word of God. And then he says, if you don't have his spirit, you are none of his. Look at verse 14 of Romans chapter 8. Verse 14 says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you know what he's saying? As many as are led by the holy scriptures, by the spirit of this Bible, by the spirit of these holy scriptures, 
He said they are the sons of God. Born again by what means? By the word. By the spirit of the word that abided forever. He said heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, this scripture, this infallible scripture can never pass away. Never. It abided forever. This word is what is being preached to us. Oh man, oh woman, be connected by the Holy Ghost. He says for you and for your children and for the whole world. That's what Peter said. Where are you in this world today? Are you in the east? He said be connected. Are you in the west? Be connected. Are you in the north of this world? Be connected. Are you in the south? Be connected to this one Christ. One Bible. One holy Bible. Giving to all my kind. By which we can be saved. He said faith in this man alone. Is salvation. Faith in this holy Bible is salvation. Look at it in verse 15 of Romans 8. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are connected. We are children of God. As he is, so are we in this world. You speak English language, English language inside you. You are connected to English language. He say, if you have the spirit of Christ inside you, the spirit of this Bible inside you. He said you will be connected. You can then cry in verse 17. And if children, then hairs, hairs of God. Joint hairs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be also glorified together. Be connected by the Holy Ghost. Where is the Holy Ghost now? In this Bible. This Holy Bible. Is the man of the Holy Ghost. The man of the Holy Ghost is here with us. From this man alone. You know, from Moses, the Lord took the spirit that was in Moses and gave it to the 70 elders. This man of the Bible, from him alone, he said, God wants to take the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Bible, and give it to the whole world. This is the promise of the Father. He said, I send the promise of the Father upon you. Oh man, turn to this man, let him baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You receive his spirit. The spirit of who? The spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is an awesome spirit. He's a glorious spirit. He's a super spirit. He says that where the spirit is, you are free. Free from sickness. Free from poverty. Free from witches and wizards. Free. Free indeed, because he's the Holy Spirit of God, by which God created. He said the Spirit moved, and God said in the beginning, he is the Holy Spirit. He says the water is flowing. Are you, is it flowing to you? Why don't you drink of this water of life as you hear this message? Be connected by the Holy Ghost. Be connected to who? To God again. By what means? By the Holy Ghost. He said by one spirit. Where we are baptized into one body. What spirit? The spirit of the Bible. Baptized into which Bible? Into which body? To this Holy Bible. He says the body that has prepared me. What body? The volume of the book that is written of me. Jesus says. Do you know that from Genesis to Revelation is the volume of Christ? That in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead. That God is not anywhere else except in this holy Bible on earth. By his son, he gave him to us by the Holy Ghost. That if you receive Christ, have you received Christ? By the Holy Ghost. Who is that? The Holy Ghost? Christ. In you, the hope of glory. This scripture, in you by the Spirit. As you have received English language. As you have received French, as you have received that language you are speaking, God says the only way you can be connected to him is for you to receive his spirit. The spirit of the Holy Bible. The spirit of the Holy Bible. My God, is Christ in you the hope of glory. He said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will give life to you so that on that day you will not be found empty. He said there were five wise, five foolish. When the whole of them rose up, 
When they heard the voice of the bridegroom, he says in the, on the last day, the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Everyone shall wake up. He says some will wake up to everlasting condemnation. Empty. Some will wake up to everlasting life because they have life in them. Have you got the life of the Bible in you? Don't you know that the scripture says in Christ was life? These words in the Bible, they are spirit, they are living, they are life. That except you eat him, whoa, 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 the scriptural man. Is he telling you to start quoting scripture alone? No. To know that this scripture, this Bible, is the Son of God Himself. You must eat the truth of the Bible. You must eat the truth of the scripture. He says, Grace and truth of the scripture came by Jesus Christ. The truth of this Bible is that this Bible, this scripture, is the Son of God Himself. The Son of the Most High God Himself, which is given to us freely. Please receive him. For as many as receive him, he gave them this spirit so that they can become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. That the name of this holy Bible, this holy scripture is Jesus Christ. He said, wherefore God has highly exalted the word of God, him, and gave him a name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Please bow to him. That's what Peter said. If you bow to him, he say, we'll give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. The truth of God himself, which came on Pentecost Day in Jerusalem. The world saw it. The people experienced it and they cried to Peter. They said, Peter, what shall we do, oh brethren? What shall we do? We don't have the spirit. You are flowing. You are speaking our languages. You are testifying of this goodness of God. Where does these people get these things from? Peter said to them that they got it from the Father, from God Almighty. He said, give the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Anywhere anyone hear this message and turn to you, oh Father, in repentance, Lord, grant that man, grant that woman the Holy Ghost. So that they, they shall be connected to the Holy Ghost, to the seat of power. Wherefore, they can cry, Abba, Father, as God is, so are we in this world, because it's one spirit. Lord, do so, and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' supernatural name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen.